In this video, we will continue our exploration of the Mega Panel accessory modules. In previous videos, we already covered the MKA3, which was a fader module. And with that, we could control audio channels and cameras and so on. The MKA2 in front of me right now has also been highlighted as a standalone PDC controller. But today, we want to combine it with an MKA1, which is Another accessory module that in this case makes this a complete high-class PDC controller. So that's what we'll highlight today. Notice that this is modularity. We have two controllers fed by PoE and data over a single cable and reactor. The panel management software will bind all this together to create one unified experience. So um, just quickly take a look at reactor here. You can see that we have the uh, MKA1 uh, and MKA2 modules associated with the same configuration and we have assigned four cameras to it. We could also assign tally for the camera selection buttons and routing triggers and so on. But we have done that in other videos talking about our generic PC controllers. And the main point I want you to take away from this video is that all the management of these two together is absolutely similar to what you have seen for for the um, complete PDC controllers where it's just a single unit that has a configuration applied to it. It's the same thing, even though we have now two units put together like this. I think even the MK3 is also, uh, also has a configuration where you can attach the MK3 with the faders to the joystick section. And then you have another kind of build it yourself PDC controller coming out of this idea of modularity that is uh, permeating the Skahoy lineup of controllers. Let's take a look at what it actually does. We have these four cameras here. We have the Canon CIN 3500 uh, um, big camera here. We really love these cameras. They are brand new from Canon and it's an amazing achievement on their part for the first entry into the PDC market. So these are really, really nice cameras. We have the uh, CIA N300 over here and we I, I'm pretty sure you don't see the output of these cameras, but you can see them, see them move. Um, we also have a Bird Dog P200 and um, obviously we can operate that. I think in this case you, uh, you do have some image from it. And um, then we have finally a Panasonic AWUE70. And if you forget what the camera's name is, then you can change it over here in Reactor. So let's just quickly have fun with that. Uh, so if I nickname my Panasonic camera something different, then it will quickly show up here in the display. And that's the power of having all the OLED displays in Skahoy controllers. You see, if you turn these off, you find no printed labels on them. It's all happening on the displays so that you have a clear naming, indication of the functions on the knobs and so on from the OLEDs on the panels. And that's what makes them so flexible that they are entirely defined by configuration run by Reactor, the panel management software we have written for these. So, um, you can basically look up any of our PDC controller videos and demonstrations and see the same pattern applied on this one. As soon as I connect an MKA1 to the MKA2, this together becomes what we call a pro class controller for cameras. And that means that it inherits the same configuration you'll find for uh, our RCP series controllers or a PDC Extreme. So it's the same thing. What it consists of is a menu where we have a home menu with all the most used functions broken out of uh, on eight encoders up here. And that goes for every single camera. So as I'm changing between the cameras, you can see that even different camera brands will have different things in this home screen, depending on what is the unique features of these. And um, then we have an exposure menu where you typically find exposure related um, content uh, Auto iris, uh, we can change the iris from manual to automatic here on the selected camera. We have um, gain mode over here, and this is for the Canon cameras. Notice if I change the bird dog camera, you have a different selection of things. Some of these are not available. That's probably because we are in full auto mode. So as soon as I go to manual mode, you can see that they become uh, now unlocked and I can change these uh, values over here. So I could continue like that, but we have done that in so many videos. So I just want you to know that it's the same principles applied 
across these two controller modules. We have a color menu here, we have a system menu for the bird dog camera. If I go back to the Canon, you see that I have a number of additional menus. For instance, I have access to the color matrix in the camera and I have a paging menu so I can go to focus, zoom and a preset menu here with a number of uh, additional features that I can adjust on these cameras. So that's the menu system that we have like up to 10 uh, times eight knobs. So that's 80 uh, functions broken out here. And I even have a shift key that from time to time will be used to also give you an additional level of parameters access from these menus. You also see the shift key, uh, as it would be expected, will also help me to um, switch to an additional set of cameras. So right now we have uh, uh, four cameras added here. I could add a fifth camera if I wanted to. And um, let me see, I'm not sure I will entirely succeed in this, but I'm just going to improvise. And I, yeah, I did manage to <laughs> quickly add a Canon CIN 500 camera right here. So basically that's the same. It, it doesn't matter if I press the one or the other button, but you can see from Reactor, it's really quick and easy to just add more cameras, even though they are different brands. And if I had enough cameras, I would also have a second page. So up to 15, uh, 16 cameras on a controller like this one. By the way, if you press the joystick top, you get to the home menu. That's a, also a design pattern you find in our configurations across any of, of the brands, uh, actually, in this case. I want to show you something cool about the presets. And that's like, you, you really want to do that with these controllers because they have color displays on these large buttons. And those color displays can be used for something really cool. Okay, so let's say I have the Canon camera here. I have this very nice shot and I want to save it as a preset. So generally on a Skyhawk controller, if you want to save a preset, there's a quick and easy way of doing this, which people really love, um, much more than they love using a touch screen and dive into five levels into a menu to create a preset. You basically press and hold the key, it turns green, and it stores the preset. But notice what also happened on this display. It actually snapped a thumbnail of what you're looking at. So as I now create a second preset, let's just do this, okay. I press and hold the second key, and you see it snaps the thumbnail of this preset. Now, the cool thing is for your volunteer operating a PTC camera, it's so easy to identify what you get by just looking at the colorful displays and you can see a thumbnail of the preset that you will recall when you press that button. So that's a really, really useful feature that comes with this combined PTC controller, the MKA1 and MKA2, that you can do these presets. So I really want to do a few more of these because it looks much better if I have some thumbnails on my display here. So I'll just quickly populate our thumbnails on these. Now, I could continue like that, but I also want to show you that we have additional preset pages. So you can go to, in this case, preset nine. Let's just quickly save a preset on that one. And you can continue like that. Going back to the first page here, then we have the thumbnails of the first page. Now, this is much, much better than sitting with a piece of paper and noting down what the presets of preset number one and preset number nine and preset eight and so on, what they are recalling. It's much cooler to just have these thumbnails in situ on your tactile PTC controller, easy to recall and easy to feel under your fingertips, which is one of the reasons why we believe in tactile control because you need to keep your eyes on the screen. You also do not drive a car with a touch screen. You need to keep your eyes on the road. So it's very important that you, you can really feel your way with a PTC controller like this one. So um, that's a very, very important feature of this. And you can do the same for other cameras. The Panasonic and the Canon cameras has this built in. So we can snap thumbnails right out of these cameras by just um, using the, the preset button here with other cameras. We uh, may need to introduce a frame grabber, but we have solutions for any camera you want. So please contact our support crew to, um, to get some advice on what is possible in your case. Before we round off this video, I want to show you that we also have thought about you broadcast engineers out there who want to do funky stuff on your controller. Like uh, if I press and hold the upper edge of this uh, key, that's the secret doorway to the engineering menu. Here we have various features you care about, like reversing the pan drive, reversing the tilt drive, reversing the zoom drive, being able to adjust the sleep time and the dim time of the panel, even the brightness. So here I can increase or decrease the LED brightness of the panel or the display brightness of the panel. That should be pretty visible on the video, it usually is. So 
that's that's a little secret um, entrance into engineering content that you can adjust here by pressing the upper edge of the preset page. So every controller will usually have some kind of doorway into this engineering menu. And in this case, it was the upper edge of that preset button. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to know more, make sure you subscribe to our social media channel and this YouTube channel. See you next time.